The fans are back, and I can't wait to see what they do next. I'm also a piece of in another video, and today I'm reviewing SmackDown that just happened last night, as well as my Money in Bank productions. Why am I doing this a little bit late? Well, I got home around 10.30, and I didn't feel like, you know, doing the video that late at night. So, this was goosebump inducing. Fun show, very energetic, great to see the crowds back. And as well as my Money in Bank predictions, Money in Bank looks like to be a pretty damn good pay-per-view, but just because it looks good doesn't mean it's going to be good in execution, but I'll get to my predictions here in a little bit. Also, I was thinking about doing my uh, Impact anniversary one. I don't know if that's going to happen because it's happening tonight, and I don't know... And my predictions won't even matter because I haven't seen the show. But Kenny Omega is going to take on Callahan in a no-DQ match for the Impact World title. I think Moose is taking on Chris Sabin, I believe. Uh, there's a Fatal 4-Way for the tag titles. I think Matt, uh, Matt Cardona in a special and a, uh, a surprise tag partner of his is going to take on... Um, Brian Myers and uh, somebody else. I forgot who it is. Uh, it may be Zach's real life uh, girlfriend. I think that's... I'm going to say Peyton Royce. But I could be... I think that I'm wrong on that. But... Anyways, I think it's Chelsea Green. I think it's Chelsea Green. I think she may be coming to Impact. But... Um, there's going to be an Ultimate X match for the X Division title. Um... Uh, Josh Alexander's defending it, which Josh Alexander's been killing it lately. I love them at, I love them him and Ethan Page in the North, and he's doing great, great, great shit as a singles competitor. So I looked at the impact card, it does look pretty good, but I'm not gonna you know do my prediction because by the time this gets up, it'll probably be the time I'll be at work. But anyways, let's get into this review proper, shall we? We get a video package of the fans and their reactions. And then uh, Vince McMahon comes out. He says, where the hell have you been, pal? And then he leaves. You know, short, sweet to the point. Vince looked genuinely happy to see the crowd back. Pat McAfee was, it sounded like he was on like four or five hour energy drinks. It, it was insane. Cole, I give Cole a lot of shit because he's not, he's not good at his job. I've given him a pass on this one because he seemed generally excited to have crowds back and he sounded like he didn't annoy me. And he seemed, you know, he sounded a bit emotional hearing the crowd back. Anyways, we'll start off with six man tag. It's Roman Reigns and the Usos versus the Edge of Mysterios. Roman's killing it in this role here. Um, Usos, you know, with the, with the whole situation that Jimmy's been through, I hope he gets to, you know, rehab because he's got kids and he needs this job. they got to give him a discipline or they got to give him a punch because enough's enough at this point. Four DUIs, come on, you're on borderline Jeff Hardy at this point. Um, Mysterio's come down. Dominic, he looks a bit nervous. I'm giving him a pass here. Edge, huge pop for Edge. That crowd, I thought the roof was going to come off the joint. There's a big-ass screen. That's a big-ass screen right there. Jesus, that screen is gigantic. The sets they have are huge. Um, The match was fine. You know, kind of typical six-man tag. Dominic gets powerbomb. He gets... um. You know, he gets uh, double teamed a lot. Man, I never thought I'd get to see a son of a Mexican person get tag teamed. Again, have fun on seeing that. Um, so after Dominic gets powerbombed, um, a spear to Roman. Uh, after a little while, a uh, hoopla. The most devastating maneuver all professionally, professional wrestling. The devastating finisher. The roll-up. One, two, three, and I think Jay or Jimmy pinned Mysterio, and Ray looked pissed. And then a big kerfluffle afterwards. Um, and then Edge uses a chair, and then Roman hits a Superman punch, and Roman's, you know, playing to the crowd, holding up the title. Spear! And then Edge uses the chair leg and uses the cross face with the chair leg. Man, a Canadian using a cross face on another person. Where have I heard this before? Oh, hi, Chris Benoit. I didn't see you there. I don't care. Look, Benoit's one of my favorite wrestlers, but he's going to hell for what he did. 
Anyways, um, so we cut the break, and then Mysterio's and Edge backstage, and then Kayla shows up. Kayla, hot damn. And then Seth shows up. What in the Star Spangled Banner hell was he wearing? It looks like something, you know, the late great Patriot. Looks like something he threw up. Like, what the hell was that? It looks like Uncle Sam took a shit, and that's what it came out as. Seth's, you know, saying, you know, oh, good luck, Edge, and, you know, it should have been me, but, you know, I'm still in the Money Make Liar match, so, you know, watch your back, ha, ha, ha. It's obviously going to lead to Rollins screwing Edge out of the, um, out of the Universal title, and we're going to have a match between those two at SummerSlam, maybe. Which hopefully happens. Anyways. Uh, Sami Zayn comes down. He blames all of you people. Not not those people. You people. Blaming him. You know, blaming the people for him not being in my big ladder match and all that stuff. All of a sudden, Finn Balor shows up. The princess package all over your face. Have fun on seeing that. Big pop for Balor. I didn't expect that to happen. I, I knew he was going to come smack them. I didn't know he was coming like this. Um... This early. Also, congrats on Ballard for having a kid. Um, I think he's going to have it sometime maybe next year or sometime maybe in November. I, can, I could remember. But anyway, good on Ballard for him having a kid. Man, his package is probably... I'm going to stop talking about that. Anyways, um, Zane attacks and Ballard retaliates, hits the, hit the ground. Okay, good, good stuff here. Um, and then recap of uh, Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart. They're calling them Shotzi, Shotzi and Knox for reasons. Um, have you know recap of them defeating Natalia and Tamina last week, and then we get uh, Shotzi and uh, Tegan versus Tamina and Natalia. It's not a for a normal one contenders match. They beat the tag champs last week, but they don't get a tag match. They don't get a tag title match. Okay, whatever. Zelina and um, Morgan are on a commentary, you know, Liv calling, you know, this is what she's basically saying, you know, Zelina's being an, an entitled bitch, which kind of the point of Zelina's character, but they argue like an old couple on commentary and it got annoying to a point. The match itself was okay. Roll up a uh, small package, one, two, three, and then... Liv and uh, Zelina brawl, and then Tamina and Natalia get pissed because they cost them their match, and then Liv stands tall in the end. Okay, just watch what I'm going to do with my predictions. So then um, we get Carmella versus Bianca for SmackDown Women's Title. Can't, Bianca, huge pop for Bianca. The crowd was really behind her. The most beautiful woman in all of WWE. Man. Corey Graves, that ink from all the tattoos has really gotten to your think box there, son. I don't think that whatever the hell Oompa Loompa spray tan that Carmella has is attractive. Not to me. The match went on twice as long as it should have been. Carmella is shit. The crowd's behind Bianca. Bianca's taken a lot of bad bumps. In the end, KOD, one, two, three crowd just explodes because it's Bianca and she's over she, Bianca's over as hell in this one then we get Chris Farley's younger brother aka Otis seriously the comparisons are baffling and gave Laura backstage and then Cesaro shows up and then Otis attacks Cesaro cool we went from Cesaro main event mania backlash which was a fantastic match against Roman Reigns to now him being a lower car lower to mid card feud it's like a recurring pattern with this man. Just put him in mania-worthy, you know, main event matches. Seriously. Give Cesaro a push. You did it once in 2014, and that went nowhere. And you did it again here, and it's going nowhere. Now, let's be fair. Cesaro is only going to get this push because he's friends with Daniel Bryan, and Vince trusts Daniel. Still, that's money. That's money written all over Cesaro, but no. Anyways, Cesaro versus um, Otis, a.k.a. Chris Farley's younger brother. Gable interferes, we get a DQ. Cesaro's going, we're going to swing around, pal. We're going for a swing. And then Otis attacks, and then a top rope splash. Okay, cool. 
What's this going to lead to? Who the hell knows? And then uh, Heyman backstage and Kayla's talking about Edge and, you know, Heyman said, who cares about Edge? It's all about the Tribal Chief. And then Biggie shows up and Heyman tried not to crack up during this. It was absolutely hilarious. Biggie, full of energy here. And then Corbin shows up and the Corbin fun me because he's talking about how much death he's in and he's growing his hair out and all that stuff. This would be sympathetic if we cared about Corbin. The what chants are in full, full, full volume here. I don't blame the fans for it because no one cares about this storyline. And then Owens shows up and he says, Kevin, I know you have money and all that stuff. And then Sunner to Corbin. Then we get a fatal four way. It's Big E versus KO versus Rollins versus Nakamura. Um, every time when Pat sees does Nakamura's entrance, it's goddamn hilarious. Uh, spear through ropes. Why? Rollins' head looks like he about hit the back of that ladder. The bottom ladder rung. We get, you know, dives of plenty. Um, and then we get a big ending, but that kind of, that was just out of nowhere and that led to nothing. Um, and then Nakamura's plates on the table. Rollins goes on top of the ladder. Owens knocks him down. Owens with a giant ass elbow drop. The crowd popped for that one. That was, that was the biggest pop of the night in my opinion. Uh, well, no, the one with Edge was actually really good. So I think that one will go to Edge, but still, that was a, that was an insane spot. Stomp on a ladder, one, two, three, Rollins wins, and then he grabs the briefcase. So, probably foreshadow what's going to happen at the pay per view. Probably not, but who knows? Because they don't know who's going to win the money you make flyer match. But, fun show overall, very fun show. S solid from front to back. It started hot and it ended hot. Anyways, let's go into my predictions now, shall we? On the kickoff for the SmackDown Tag Titles, we have the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic versus the Usos, Jay and Jimmy. They're probably going to have the Usos win, but if it's a punishment for Jay, they're going to have him lose. I'm because look, let's be let's be frank. The Mysterious title has been shit, but that's not their fault. It's just the way they've been they've been booked. So, if punishment wise, the Mysterious are going to retain, but for storyline purposes, maybe the Usos will win. All right, for the men's money bank, we have Ricochet, John Morrison, Drew McIntyre, Riddle. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Big E, and Shinsuke Nakamura. The most obvious choice may be Riddle and maybe McIntyre. I wouldn't have McIntyre win. Drew, has his tower got screwed over due to the pandemic, but he's made the best out of it. He's going to get another title shot down the line. He's going to have the title down the line soon. Riddle, no, because that won't work. Ricochet, no, and Morrison, no. They're just kind of there to have a payday, in my opinion. No, no, Owens, no. Rollins, no, because he's going to be feuding with Edge and no Nakamura. So, I'm having Big E win because it might tie into the WWE title uh, picture. Then for the women's, we have Asuka, Naomi, Nikki Cross. Her name's not Nikki Ash because that's a stupid name. Alexa, Alexa Bliss, uh, Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Natalia, and Tamina, the women's tag champions because... Why not? For the love of God, don't have Alexa win because if I if she does win, I'm gonna be pissed. Um, Nikki's not winning. Um, I want to have Naomi win because I, I feel like she doesn't need it. Um, no to Oscar because she's already won it and Oscar's been having a pretty bad year for 2020 and 2021. Um. No to Natalia and to Tamina because they're the tag champions. The possible... I could see him giving it to Selena and screwing Liv out of it. I'm going with Liv on this one. Because she's been over with the crowd and she's got a really good underdog story. I feel like DeVille might screw her out of it. And keep trying to screw her at every moment. Every time when it looks like she it looks like Liv's going to cash in. DeVille's going to be like, no, no, you can't do that. So it might be a recurring theme with her until Liv eventually takes it out. If it's going to be off of Bianca, I'd say hold it off till probably near the end of the year, maybe. Because Bianca's been over as hell, and 
I don't know if Turner Hill would be the good idea because I don't think anybody would want to be, uh, boo Bianca. But we'll have to see what happens. Then for this uh, Raw Women's Championship, we have Flair versus Rhea Ripley. They're going to have Flair win. I want Rhea to win, but I'm picking Charlotte. I don't want to be right, but they're going to give it to Charlotte. Because why the hell not? Why don't you just bury the Raw Women's Division? Why don't you? Charlotte does not need the title. She just doesn't. Then we get uh, Olos and Styles versus the Viking Raiders. I hate the Viking Raiders. I want War Machine, please. Anyways, Styles and Olos are winning because it's their first time defending the Tag Titles since Mania. Or, well, they won that Mania and it's their first time. Well, the Raw after Mania, actually. All right, and then we get Lashley versus Kofi. This is going to be a pretty damn good match. I'm having Lashley win. Now, there's rumors that Kofi's going to win the title, but Biggie's going to cash in on Kofi. And then probably will set up a triple threat, maybe at SummerSlam. I wouldn't do that. Maybe Woods is going to turn on Kofi during the match. And Woods is going to get jealous of Kofi getting these title shots when it should have been him. It should have been me! It's going to be like Dolph Ziggler in 2019. And then that's going to be a storyline between them. And then maybe whoever's going to face Lashley at um, SummerSlam. Rumors is going to be Goldberg. No. That's not going to work. Then we get Roman versus Edge. It's going to be Roman. Have Roman hold the title to next Mania. I'm being, I'm being, being dead ass honest. Because it's already been spoiled. But Cena is going to re be returning next week. And he's going to be challenging Roman, I think, for the title at SummerSlam. And that's going to be a big match. And Rollins is going to cost Edge the match. And that's going to set up a match between those two. So, yeah. Those are my predictions here, folks. So, what did you guys think of this show? And who do you think is going to win at uh, My Need Bank? Let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Join the herd. I'll talk to you guys next video. Peace out.